Hey guys, one clue here. I hope all of you are doing well and having a really great day. We do have another update and we want to take a look into it and update it together to the device for all of your Nerd QX plus 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 Nerd X, Nerd X Gamma and so on. So let's get started and right into it. As you can see, we are back again on GitHub and it's interesting to see that we do have a new version for all the Nerd AX devices. It's the version 1.0.30 and we do have plenty of changes and fixes in there. We want to quickly go over them and then we want to update our device and take a look on how different it looks and what it does compared to the previous version. So first things first, we do have a moved scratch and WebSocket message to the PSRAM. So now this has been moved over to the PSRAM instead of being on the actual flash, which is awesome. We do have an updated config CSV example and a kconfig update as well as having now the MAC address to the info response point and the web UI which is awesome so now you can see the MAC address in there as well. We also do have a little bit of refactor when it comes to the HTTP server which is good it's always awesome to have some refactoring because this either means our improvements for the performance or it also means that there are some nice other changes and better options for the future and future developments. We also do have a widening the, uh, on the pool information card, which is good. So we will take a look on that. It's been done by Duck Eggs. We've seen lately Duck Eggs was doing plenty of work when it comes to the BitX firmware, when it comes to all the UI stuff. So he, he he seems to be doing this on all the Nerd Eggs devices as well, which is awesome to see. And huge thanks to you, Duck Eggs, for doing that. We have a fixed header logo for the mobile view from him as well. As well as on the dashboard, there is the heat section optimization for the Note X Ultra now in there as well, which is good to see. We also have some web UI optimizations for home and swarm views. And we have set correct project FAF icon as well, because previously the FAF icon, the little icon that you saw when you do have a tab open on your browser, this was not the correct FAF icon, so now this has been switched over to something else. We will see this in just a second. The next thing is a filter system locks by input on the web UI. So this is nice to see. You can now filter the input from the locks on whatever you're looking for. This is really nice and handy. We also do have a improved ASIC result logging, including pool and session difficulty, as well as a new feature in the settings, added stratum difficulty setting to mining configuration danger zone by 0xfren. So if I do read this correct, this should give you the option to set your mining difficulty upfront and do this in the web UI. Uh, if I do see it's in the danger zone. We will take a look in this in just a second. There's also a fix on the system, includes stratum difficulty in observable mapping, also by 0xfren. Awesome to see that in here. We have added validation script to block merging when there are compiler errors. So this is just for GitHub, uh, but that's also a nice thing to have here. We have a refactor on the ping task. Use Stratum Resolved IP and simplify RTT logic by 0xfren as well in here. So previously, when you do have a connection to a pool, your device is pinging that pool from time to time. And if it does lose the connection to it or to the fallback Stratum pool server, then it will reboot because maybe something is wrong on your end with your Wi-Fi or something else is going on. And then it will just try to reboot. Also, there is add pool difficulty field to system info export plus the UI. So this comes in in the same way as the other PRs where we do have now the difficulty to be able to set on here as well. So this is now the pool difficulty, not the stratum difficulty, um, which is nice to see. So we can actually see what the pool is suggesting as for a difficulty level. And we can also compare this with the difficulty level that we set ourselves. We have a suppress on the comms error, as well as a fix on the best difficulty formatting, prevent affinity and broken number pipe uh, from 0xfriend as well. We also have added binary uploads to R2 to remove the course proxy. This is a nice thing because what PMAGS is doing here is he originally had the flasher, the web flasher for all the Node X devices on GitHub as well, which introduced a couple of course header issues. He moved it over to Cloudflare to the R2 buckets or the R2 instances over there that you can host for free. 
and this should eliminate all the course proxy errors. I'll also take a look in that for the BitX web flasher to make sure that I do adapt to this as well because it's just awesome. I don't need to update all the things manually myself. You can just have a workflow there where it does all the things automatically, which is a good thing to have and I should take a look in this as well if I do find a little bit of time. So now what we want to do is we want to hop over to my NutX. This right here is my NutX Gamma and I want to go over to settings, scroll down a little bit and take a look on check for latest release. We do have the ESP miner for the Gamma and the WW bin for the Gamma. Let's select that. Yes, I want to replace that. We make sure that we do keep these files. And afterwards, what we want to do is we want to update the firmware, browse for the firmware. No, wait, let me update the, the website first. Let's quickly do that, open and then flash incorrect file expected. Oh yeah, I was using the wrong one. The W needs to go in there. So now this is updating actually the www.bin file to my NerdX Gamma, which will take a little bit of time, but I usually do it that way that I update the website first because this does not start up a new start boot sequence because if I would update the ESP minor binary file first, my device would reboot. I don't want that to happen right now. So I will do the website first and afterwards I will do the actual firmware. So this is happening right now. So let's give this a couple of seconds and then we can take a look on how different it actually looks or what's going on in here. So now the device is actually rebooting. What I want to do now is I want to go over to dashboard and I want to press Control Shift and R to actually reload the page. Oh, this is so awesome. Let me pull this down here. Do you see this? This little N is now the new FAF icon showing a nice new FAF icon on the tab. You should be able to see that in here. So let's go back in here and let's take a look what it does show us. So currently Stratum is not connected. Now it's connected back again. Oh, this is a nice feature. We see a ping down here. I'm, I just set it up with this burner Bitcoin address and it's connected to my pool here at home, which is running on my start nine OS node at home. So if you want to take a look on that, make sure to check the video out for that. It should be up here somewhere in the info card and uh, it's booting up. It's connected. It is hashing. It looks perfect. So this is really looking good. All the things are as usual in here. All right, let's go over to the swamp page and let's quickly wait here for a second for all the devices to populate. I do have a couple of them currently running and we will see them in just a second. Here we go. So these are the devices that are currently running. Awesome. Uh, I could also update my Nerd QX Plus in just a second, but currently I'm not doing that. I do see all these different models that are running here. Plenty of things to test and yeah, it uh, takes a little bit of time to update all of them. But for that, there's also a nice script to update all of them. If you are interested in a script that you can use on your PC to update all of your devices with just one command instead of going to the web UI and doing this manually, then let me know that in a video description down below so that I do know you're interested in that. And then I'll make sure to do a video about that. So this is looking good here. If you go over to the settings page, we do see we have the fallback and the primary starting pool in here and everything just looks normal. InfluxDB is also in here. And if you now go over to system, we do see there's the MAC address. Uh, the last reason for the reset was a software reset. We also see the version that we're running on. And if I now take a look on the, f on the locks, this is amazing. It doesn't have the feature that you do have on the BIDX where you can expand it to like a big screen if I do see correct here, but I can filter for something, something like power underscore manner management. Let's see. And now it's only showing me the power management. Ah, this is awesome. This is really awesome. It's just eliminating everything else. If I do put in something in here and now you do see everything else is coming back in here. This is an awesome feature. I love to see that. And it's just amazing. This and as well on the dashboard that we do see the ping that we do have to our pool. That is just awesome to see. So with that, 
This was the update for your Nerd X, your Nerd X Gamma, your Nerd QX, your QX Plus, and your Plus Plus, and all the other variants that are out there. I do hope you enjoyed this video. If you did so, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to this channel so you don't miss out on any further updates and always keep up to date. So till then, keep hashing and see you in the next one.